Hi, Tech Rabbit here again. So, back to the um, signal generator, and this time I thought we'd actually go through some of the more advanced features. So, anyway, let's have a look at the, uh, again, back at the um, pulse functionality. So this is actually interesting, because you can actually, this is a so-called pulse, so um, what you can do is that you can actually adjust the duty cycle so that you actually can get the width of pulse you want to have. And then there's a, another feature connected to this, uh, which I will show now. Let's take a disconnect. Cables. It actually has a TTL. Let's see if I can get it to focus. So it has a connector in the back. So what you can do there is that you can ha you can trigger edge trigger the um, the the waves so that it starts at an appropriate section. And um, but then if you're going to connect into that, then you need one of these adapter cables. This is kind of like from um, microcontroller programming. So so one of the cables that came with one of those kits. So then you can actually plug it into here. Slot it in, and then you can get the um, signals out to your breadboard or something. And um, the only drawback is that it's not really well, <laughs> or actually, it's not documented exactly how to use this. But I'm, I'm assuming that the I'm going to be testing this in some projects is that the um, TTL in is the actual. Uh, the one that it does the it, it's trigger synchronization, and then the uh, I don't know what the TTL one and TTL two is actually. Maybe that's just um, bringing the TTL signal out. So when you're using pulse type signals, then you can actually bring the TTL signals out from both channels. So that would be like channel one and channel two output, and then it has a serial um, TTL levels serial connection option, which I think is that you. Uh, vaguely mentioned in the manual that it's for like, user programming, but um, as I said, the documentation isn't there, so, so uh, don't really can't really talk more about that. But I will be um, this edge edge trigger option. I will be testing in a later video when I'm doing some projects that actually digital projects that actually require the um, the signal from the signal generator to be edge triggered on a specific happening in the in the project. So let's have a look at some other, uh, or another interesting waveform option that's available, and that's um, arbitrary waveforms. And um, I've actually made one here, and um, I'm going to be going through the software, the usage of the software for this in this video also. And uh, I suggest that, um, defining the arbitrary waveforms is done in the in the software. So we'll be coming back to this, but um, you have an option of defining your own own waveforms and getting them generated. So let's have a look at some of the modularization functions. And they're available through the mod menu. And um, actually it would say that these are easier to use from the software, but um, one could also set it up through the panel here. So I've, what I've set up is I've set a frequency sweep from um, 50 to 100 hertz. And then when, when one puts it on, then it starts the sweep action. So it starts from 50 and then it and then you can set up like how fast it ramps up and ends at 100 hertz and then it drops down to 50. And then of course you can use the whole frequency range and other settings to um, make the um, uh, make it appropriate for whatever you, you need. Yeah, and then you, exactly, you have the modularization function on, uh, available on both channels so you can actually just um, click on the menu and go to the next option and then it says channel 2 so, so um, that's quite good so you can run different things on different channels. So in the um, modelization you also have the option to um, have a more precise control over a, over a pulse. So you actually can um, set up how many nanoseconds the, the full full wave is and then how many nanoseconds the actual pulse is. It makes it a bit easier to. And then you also have the op option to offset the signal. Maybe 
basically we can adjust it. So instead of dealing with frequency, you can deal with time, which is actually quite useful sometimes because you actually would like to have, you would like to have a pulse that is a specific number of nanoseconds long, or reoccurs uh, within a certain uh, amount of nan nanoseconds repeatedly. That's actually quite useful. Okay, the <coughs> burst modularization required a cup of coffee because this actually. Um, I mean, you, you set up the waveform on channel 1, so no big deal, you know, frequency, amplitude, such things. And then you go to um, mobilization, and then you, you've selected the burst mode. So everything looks okay, and then I um, actually selected um, manual triggering, and I put it on, and as you see, now it dies, there's no signal, and then when I manually trigger it through the OK button, then I get a burst. So that seems to be okay. Now, however, just so you know, I've got into situations where it actually doesn't work. I don't know what, what gets messed up, but it like you get you have a continuous signal and when you press the um, trigger button then you it kinda like kills off a few of the waveform bits. It's, I, I don't know, what, isn't it, I've been trying to figure out if it's an alternative mode of operation or something, but I, it's, there's no documentation on it, but I mean, the way I showed you is the way that it should work on, under circumstances of manual trigger. You can also actually trigger, trigger the burst from various sources like AC, DC, external sources, or, or um, channel 2, you know, you, you can combine different things, but if you're using manual, then it should just work the way that I showed you here. But <laughs> I mean, sometimes it actually doesn't. So you can be, like, like confused, like, with this mode. Like, if you want to use it, the, just remember that sometimes the poor logic inside this device just gives up and, and, and it gets into some kind of a state where it's, it's just not... And then what I usually do is that if that happens, then I just pull the power and restart the thing, um, set up the waveform, come back in here, and then redo the burst setup. And usually I can get it to work. Anyway, let's have a look at some other waveforms that want hidden a little bit more hidden in the menu. So if we um, take the wave again, and then it puts the cursor where you can select the waveform. And then you can actually switch between all the standard ones we've been seeing before. And then you get to Parcel Cine, which I don't know really what the difference between this and the sinus. I've tried to change the values, but it doesn't seem to do anything. And then this is a CMOS signal, as it doesn't change the voltage level. I don't know, is it to do with the speed of the rise and fall or something? Moving on. And then this is just DC, and then this is half wave, full wave. Um, it's like you're using rectification, so half half wave rectification, full wave rectification. And then this is the ramp signal you can find, and then ramp down, and then a noise, and then a ramp up. This is like a um, RC circuit, and then ramp down. Uh, what was this one? Oh, I forgot to cheat and look at what it says in the menu. Multitone. Okay, something to do with audios. Not an audio professional. So. Um, sync. Arbitrary, and that's the arbitrary waveform I've already discussed. <laughs> that's a, a good little bit of hidden functionality there. So I, I don't, yeah, I mean, they could have expanded this menu so you just click like wave twice and then it would like go through the wave option. I don't know why they had to like hide it in that kind of a way. But, um, but anyway, there's, and, and I mean, lots of those, um, those specialized waveforms there for 
projects or initiatives where you actually work with those wa waveforms. They're either an input to a process or, um, yeah. So it's like uh, video encoding, sound, and sound encoding on, on the analog side. So anyway, that's uh, pretty much covers everything from the like hands-on usage of the device. And um, now I thought we could just move over and have a look at it from the software perspective. Because the software is not that bad, the one that comes with this. Yep, and um, just as a last thing, this is... Um, Ah, I don't know. Of course, it has two channels, and they pretty much they work they work the same. And, uh, as, but um, the one thing I thought I'd show here is the um, that you can actually create a phase offset between the um, channels. So you can um, do that, which is actually sometimes quite useful. But otherwise, I mean, it's two channels. So. Okay, time to look at the software part. So anyway, here's the software. Uh, installation was quite um, easy to do. So. But anyway, when you want to connect, then you connect the USB cable that came with the device, and then um, your device will pop up as a COM port. And it won't automatically find the one that it's connected to, so you have to try and then try to um, click on connect. And um, When um, you actually have a successful connection, then um, the serial number will pop up. In other other cases, you might actually get some model number in this display in this field, but it, you know it's not connected. Um, and we go to the next phase. Control panel. And it's quite a nice control panel. You have access to both channels, all the um, normal um, functions. Uh, wrong, sorry. I was going to take that one. <laughs> Just to get something in there. So, And then you, you can do things like syncing the frequencies or waveforms or whatever. So you can actually control two channels as one. Well, which is actually quite nice. And then you have access to all the extended functions. And um, I actually I think personally that using the um, like uh, sweep frequency pulse function uh, possibly even the burst mode is actually easier to do from the software than it is from the panel. Because in the, yeah, here you have like, e I think, easier access to all the information you need. And um, the most interesting thing is this arbitrary waveform generation. So here you can uh, set up your selected arbitrary waveform. Uh, so let's take sinus wave and then. Uh, Modify it a little bit, make it into my own weird type of a waveform, something like that. That looks good. And then you can actually apply math to it. So then you can actually, like here, you can use add, so it combines two waveforms. Or you can actually subtract, and then you get different types of waveforms. So that. That's the type of functionality you have. And then, of course, within the limitations of the um, amplitude you have available. <laughs> so in this case, it gets a little bit screwed. And then when you finished uh, defining it, then you have to remember to actually store the, the um, waveform into uh, the storage location. And then when you go to the uh, control panel, and then you can actually um, It's a pity that uh, XSplit isn't showing the drop-down menus. It doesn't do that when you select a window. There. So now I have my arbitrary waveform, and then we can actually have a look at it operationally. So, here it's my very randomly generated <laughs> waveform. And, um, I mean, the way you use these custom waveforms is that you... you um, you're building a system that needs a certain input, um, analog input signal of some kind, and, and you actually don't have the device that produces that signal. So you can fake it a bit here, so you can continue designing your thing. Or, um, 
yeah, or, or you want to um, produce an output signal of a potential device that you are you're yourself developing, but you want to actually enable the parallel development um, uh, of another developer so that they can actually take over the waveform and um, work on it. But anyway, if you like this video, consider subscribing, um, hit the like button, um, tell other people about this, buy me a coffee, get tired of making these in the evenings, and um, yeah, you'll see this in uh, the frequency generator in use in projects in later videos, so keep following, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.